بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Now the question comes that if we are not the bodies then what about the circumstances of our bodies in this world of ours? I mean some are born with healthy bodies, some with sick bodies. Some are born in good circumstances, others are not. If we are not the bodies, then what has determined the states of our bodies? Undeniably, the way we are experiencing this life through our bodies itself determines the sort of opportunity we have to try and arrive at the truth of ourselves and acquire a substantive existence. It stands to reason that somebody born in the household of saints would have a head start as opposed to or an advantage as opposed to somebody born into a household of hardened criminals. People sometimes are born with psychopathic and sociopathic tendencies. Others are not. So what determines the properties of the body that we bring into or we are placed in or the social political circumstances the answer here is that this hayatu dunya of ours the bodily world is not the commencement of our existence if we can understand that there is a distinction between the spirit and the body then the spirit is prior to the body and it's from another realm and encounters the bodily realm as a part of the process of the attainment of whatever it's trying to attain. So of necessity, there has to be an existence prior to our current existence. And that existence determines the nature of the existence that we have in this world of ours. And that resolves a lot of problems, this understanding of a pre-worldly existence. For a start, if this was the commencement of our existence, then religion would not make sense. Because the very first thing we would ask is that God, you created us embodied creatures where naively we understood ourselves to be bodies. And then we transgress We never realize we are the spirits that we are. And then we go to hell. And then we get tortured. Or we go to paradise. And even in paradise, we are in a state of alienation from our real selves. Because we still feel we are bodies that are rejoicing in the falls of paradise and experiencing comfort and bliss. But that is not our true self. So that would be something that would go against God and make God very, very oppressive and unjust. And then we can ask God, well, why did you favor X over Y? X is in a holy, spiritual household. Y is in a household of criminals and hard-hearted souls. Hard-hearted souls. If we were to understand that there is a pre-worldly existence, then that blame will be shifted from God and the onus of life will fall upon us as opposed to falling upon God. If we can understand very, very clearly that this world can only be a bestowal from God, if we have asked for an opportunity to be in this world, then we can start making sense of why we are here. But if we feel that our initiation into existence is from this bodily existence, then that will not make sense and we will not take the onus of life upon ourselves. Now, when we look at the pre-worldly life notion, the Quran states, you are all one soul. It is one soul that is scattered within 8 billion people at present. If we can understand that accurately, 
then the very first thing that will come to our mind is that we cannot blame each other in the way that we are blaming each other. Rather, we will say that the inadequacies within humanity that are generated through a state of being bodily are my inadequacies. So as opposed to shifting the blame, our mindset should be, let us address the problem. And if the problem is addressed at the global level, then indeed we have addressed the problem truly because it is my problem, not anybody else's. When we talk of fear, if we understand clearly that we are one humanity, one soul, we will take necessary steps to alleviate the state of fear. We would remind ourselves as a global reality that we are not the bodies, we are something else. There is no need to fear and as a result become insecure and as a result become violent and as a result war with each other. Because we are not the bodies and we are not distinct from each other, we are one being. When we understand that we've had a pre-worldly existence, as the Quran makes it very clear and reason as well, then we will understand that the bodily constitution and the circumstances that we have as individuals in this life are a direct result of what has gone on in a life prior to this. And it seems that the life prior to this one was also not a pure spirited life. It was also a form of an embodied life, but maybe not as grossly embodied as this one. We had greater recognition of our true selves there that we don't have here. And the Quran makes it clear that you have not been given entirety of knowledge. You have only been given very limited knowledge in order for you to really recognize who you are and to refine yourselves. Now think about this very clearly. If there is a person who is found guilty of a crime and then they plead to the judge for another chance and an opportunity. Now if in a future world we can imagine this, that the Technology is such that we can sit a person inside a lab in a controlled environment and we can place that person's mind within the same instance and the scenario and the circumstances in which they committed that crime. But it is just within the mind, illusory, not happening through the physical body then that test will only be real if the memory of the first crime and the subsequent trial is obliterated from the mind. If the memory was there, then obviously that criminal will act righteously and they haven't proven themselves to be improved, transformed people. So if this world is an opportunity for us to make amends for something that we have done in a previous life, then obviously memories would have to be effaced so that we can truly prove ourselves. So if in a previous world we have done something wrong and we are guilty of something as the Quran alludes to, that maybe we have challenged God in his godliness and we have become very inadequate in the way that we were. And as a result, we have this opportunity of this life and whatever we have done there has determined the circumstances of this life. If we can understand that, that we are spirits who are caught up within bodies, the circumstances of bodies are determined through what we have done previously and as spirits, we are one spirit, then in that case, this life can become a very different experience. Immediately we will know not to shift the blame 
of our bodily states to anybody else. But to recognize that this is something that I deserve or something that I have chosen. And through it, I have to find my way back. So as opposed to cursing my physical state, I take it as a gift from God in order to work through it. To know that I am not ugly, I am not beautiful. I am not sick, I am not well, I am not young, I am not old. I am not a Muslim, I am not a Christian. I am not a race, I am not ethnicity, I am not gender. I am none of these things. I am somebody else who is growing through the present circumstances. And these circumstances are ideal for me to grow through either because I have set the processes in place that have culminated in this state of mind or that I have asked for it. In any case, it's an opportunity for me to reclaim myself. And if I can understand that I'm not an individual, distinct, disjointed and disconnected with the rest of humanity, I'm not a part of the Muslim Ummah as opposed to the Christians. I'm not a part of the Abrahamic faiths as opposed to the broader faith. I'm not a part of the faithful as opposed to the faithless. I'm one person, the one who calls upon Yahweh is the same as the one who calls upon Ar-Rahman, is the same as the one who is denying Ar-Rahman, is the same as the one who is saying, I am God instead of anybody else. We are one soul. It is my story. I need to get it right. Then in that case, neither would I be concerned about my immediate body and bodily circumstances. I would be concerned with availing myself of the opportunity and growing through it. That's the first thing. And the second thing, I will not selfishly only be concerned about myself. I will see the problems of humanity as my personal problems. So as opposed to the world in which we live right now, in which distinctions prevail, bodily distinctions, think about it. We are distinct in religious terms, we are grouped. Sects, we are grouped. Nations, nations and nationalities, we are grouped. Chosen ones and the unchosen ones, or the people who are not chosen. What we are seeing in Israel and Palestine. The ones who are being butchered is me, and their tormentors is also me. Imagine if we have that awakening to reality of the spirit and the real nature of the bodily, how much more refined our minds can become and how much more meaningfully we can live and how effectively we can generate the emergence of the spirit from the bodily. I would like us here to think that if we can just be accurate in understanding that we are one being, the human problems are my problems and they are resulting from this state of assumption of being bodies and bodily and bodiliness. If we can absolve ourselves and if we can understand that I individual have chosen all of these 8 billion states in which I experience myself and I'm one person, how much productive this life can become and substantive in the search for my true calling. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.